Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 19th, 2020, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, we want to thank all you guys and girls and ladies <laughs> and men for attending this week. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Thank you so much. So what are we talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I went ahead and took out, is this beginning of the end? Because that's been in there for several weeks. And even if you just measure peak to trough or close to close, however you want to measure it, we've gone far enough to, at least as the media would define it, go into a bear market. So, But I do have a lot of thoughts on that, obviously. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, just so my ADD doesn't kick in, keep them focused on the slides. And when we get the live charts, you can ask about anything you want. We can always come back to the slides, too. Your favorite stock picks? I can't imagine that you'll have a whole lot just yet because only shorts will be showing up and the methodology requires a pullback. So we haven't had that just yet. Although the market occasionally tries. So what are we talk about? Well, I want to talk about the model a little bit. I want to follow up a little bit on that. As you know, we were heavily, heavily long and then we started getting creamed on those longs, and then we were heavily short. So how did all that work out, at least from the, and I guess I should put the word hypothetical in there, hypothetical model. But I do take most of the trades, or I try to take them all uh, as possible and try to recreate what the model is doing. And then I have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of random thoughts. Before we get into all that, there's a flame screen. As you know, as you know, you can lose money trading. Or as I often sum it up, stealing a line from Greg Morris, all predictions about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right, here's some random thoughts coming into today's presentation. Now, I spent the majority of my piece working on this. I, I was contacted last night by someone in a bit of a panic about what to do with their portfolio. Well, I assume they went into some sort of cash months ago or even a year ago when they said they were their advisor. They told their advisor they want to be conservative from now on because they're getting up there in age. So I thought I had one less person to worry about. Well, evidently not. She is getting decimated in this slide. The problem is the bomb's already blown up and I've been out there preaching and teaching for 20 years, and it seems like friends and family don't show up until, pardon my French, or as my little French friend says, dude, that sounds like English, the shit hits the fan. Well, the bomb is already blown up, so I'm kind of in a weird situation, and so, is, so are the people who bought and held. Now you're in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. And what I'm referring to is the oversold nature of the market. Oversold can always become even more oversold. As I kind of halfway joke, it's always darkest right before it gets more dark. Now, sooner or later, we're going to have the mother of all retrace rallies. But so far, obviously, that hasn't happened. But when we do, maybe use that to sell down to the sleeping level. Now, a few of my friends and family are like, well, what do you mean by that? And it's like, well, you having trouble sleeping at night, worried about your portfolio? They're like, yeah, well, move enough into cash to where you're not worried as much about it. Now, I am not an RIA, although I do have some problems with some of these financial planners who are just drinking their own Kool-Aid, they're buying Hope Kool-Aid. And I've addressed that quite a bit in today's piece. So check that out at davelander.com. And it's going to be under bear market updates. And this is being recorded on 31920 if you want to go in and read, th read that. But click on the menu on my website at the top where it says bear market updates and go down to 320 to read more about that. So I'm in a weird situation, and I woke up really stressed and worried about this person this morning because I'm not sure what I could do to help her given the nature of this market. And we're in a liquidation market, and that's what's concerning, and that's a little bit further down in here. 
One thing I would be really careful with is theme-based trades. I've seen theme-based trades throughout the years, even even when I was just becoming or, or just starting to trade. There were some floods once and somebody's broker called them and said the floods are washing away the fertilizer. We need to buy fertilizer stocks. Anything logic or theme-based can get you into a lot of trouble. And someone called me yesterday. They bought uh, quite a few puts on transportation and entertainment and also airline stocks based on all this mess unfolding. And it worked out really, really well, so it's a good problem to have. And the point I just tried to make with this gentleman is, thank the market gods for the money you made on this theme-based investment, but just be careful in the future when placing such, and I hate to use the word bets, but they're really bets when you're counting on some kind of theme to unfold. And that theme obviously changes depending on what's going on in the world. What I would argue, what I would suggest you do instead is just follow a general system. And if you do have setups in the airlines and wherever else, then by all means take them. It's a liquidation kind of market. And before I get into that, one of the things I want to point out is it's not a value type of market, okay? An in-law of an in-law calls me Friday afternoon, and she's like, boy, you're really hard to get a hold of. I'm like, yeah, what can I do for you? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> and the, she wanted to buy airlines. And it's like, oh, geez, you know, no, she's never placed a trade in her life. And she had a little extra money, you know, God bless her. And she wants to throw that money at the market because she's heard about this thing, buy low and sell high. Many of people have been destroyed by that statement. As I preach as a trend follower, you need to buy high and sell higher with the greater fool theory in mind. Stocks are not a bargain at this point. And by the way, as I wrote the column, as a trend follower, you're going to be a little late to leave the party and you're also going to be a little late to join the party. And I'm not sure if it was Greg Morris, but I, it probably was him. And when I joined the American Association of Professional Technical Analysis, note to self, I think I own my dues. <laughs> Better sign back up. Or otherwise, I can't claim to still be a member. But when I joined, I thought I would learn all these gee whiz things. And I learned a few gee whiz things. But a lot of the stuff I learned was just common sense. Stuff I already knew, but it was good to learn it again. And I think it was Greg that said, in order to follow a trend, you must first have a trend to follow. And a lot of times you're going to be waiting. And again, you're going to overstay your welcome at tops. And you're going to be a little late to the party at bottoms, but that's okay. You have to learn to live with that. You also get some whipsaw here and there. Now we're in a liquidation market. I'll talk a little bit more about this in just one second, but that's something that I also covered in today's random thoughts. Now, somebody brought up something interesting yesterday. The shorts in some cases are running out of rum. We shorted at 20 something, and now the stock is approaching, at least intraday, single digits. So we'll talk a little bit about that. I would urge you to be careful of the perils of flickering ticks. And I, I got that line or that quote, I should say, flickering ticks from David Keller. And I'm not sure who he got it from. It's when you watch David, he talks, he has a lot of little things he throws out that he's picked up over the years. He's probably interacted with more money managers and technicians than any of us ever will. And he's picked up a lot along the way. But what I mean by that is it's really hard, and I'm looking over at my screens to see what I'm tempted to do now. It's really hard not to get sucked in to this market, especially on an intraday basis when it looks like you have the mother of all reversals happening. So I'm trying to learn the fine art of sitting on 
my hands, but I have been guilty of making some trades. And by the way, sometimes I call it an S&G trade, which I've done a little bit of, meaning that you're just trading it at a small size. If you lose, so what? The only thing is you have to be careful because you can't get a little bit pregnant and all those little losses do add up. So I would urge you to be very selective and make sure when you do go after something that you have a specific setup in mind and of course a plan for what to do. Now I'm getting a few I can't short. What do I do? Well, Set up an account where you can short, okay? Deep in the money puts, which opens up a huge can of worms, is also an option. Everybody here, I think, is in, or most everybody here is a gold member, and you should have Dave Landry on swing trading. I wrote a little bit in there about buying in the money puts as opposed to shorting, or in the money calls is for is to go on long, as far as that's concerned. Speaking of options, just be careful. And I don't want to pick on the gentleman yesterday. He was making so much money. So I guess he's I guess he's so happy it doesn't matter if I pick on him or not. But I was using terms like intrinsic and extrinsic, and he wasn't exactly sure what that meant. But I can tell you this, his intrinsic was huge. Okay. Now, right on cue, as you would expect, guru bragging. As I also wrote in the column today, kind of like last. Last week at Bandcamp with this column thing, huh, Dave? Is the gurus are coming out of the woodwork and it aggravates the hell out of me. The webinar or whatever it was that was presented to me, of course, I didn't click on it because it just would have made my blood boil, was on how I picked this top. And look at me how smart I am. And what I'm seeing lately is how the market is at a low, and it might be, but they've been saying it's at a low for a week now, some of these guys at least, and they're gonna tell you, because they predict early and often, how great they did at the low. Now the point coming back to the trend following is, it's gonna take you a little while to get a signal on the buy side, and in fact, in one case, it might actually take nearly a year it's something I didn't realize with one of the systems, which is kind of cool to watch all this unfold and learn from it. You know, it's one thing to go back and look at the charts, which nobody does anyway. Nobody who's not a trader, right? If you want to retire someday, you probably should go in and study what happens in bear markets because sooner or later, one will come along. That's one of the few things I can guarantee in this business. This is my third bear market since I've been trading. So I find that kind of interesting. Now, as I said earlier, somebody was pointing out, one of the Chris's in the group, that the shorts are running out of the room. We had this BLDR short at 2340, now down to 1064, which is a good problem to have, obviously. But at 278 shares remaining, and this is a hypothetical account, you can't see that 278, I don't think, can you? Is it in here? Yeah, it, it's um it's right here. So at 278 shares remaining, obviously if you were actually following this, you'd probably had 300 because 600 shares total more than likely. Your maximum profit on the remainder is 29.57. Now the stop is pretty liberal, okay, because we're in longer term trend following mode. And if that stock went to zero, your maximum profit is 29.57 but you're risking a maximum of 1768 and you could argue on the short side it could even be more but as a general statement we try and hopefully more than try to pick stocks that aren't going to double in our face overnight we're not shorting biotech right now even though biotech is pretty ugly overall now and we'll get to that so this brings up an interesting point it's like, at what point do you just go ahead and cover your shorts, especially when they've imploded this far? Well, I'm going to continue to trend follow in the model, and I'm going to do this on a personal level. But I am, I am willing to bail out. If this thing drops much below 10, I might be thinking about bailing out because the risk is not worth the 
limited reward. Remember, when we get into stocks, we want to have unlimited gains, and the most we can make on the short side is what? 65%, okay? But we're getting there, and you can see that PAGS up there, it's approaching the single digits too, so we're going to have a decision to make on that one too. But it is a good thought. I'm glad it was brought up. I was thinking along those same lines, like, hey, man, if this um, BLDR drops into the low single digits, I might have to bail out. And that got me thinking, I don't do this often, but I do have one client that does, and every now and then it gets filled. So I put in an order to buy it at five overnight. Didn't get filled, but thought it'd be kind of interesting, you know, maybe if somebody really, really wants out, you know, I'll, I'll sell it to you or buy it from you, I should say, at uh, five bucks a share. And then let's just call it quits. So I think if that number gets much smaller, we have a hard decision, which is a good problem to have on that one. And hopefully, and I just said hope, hopefully the other ones too. So I'd be interested, you know, let's take it up in the Facebook group if you guys want to talk about that further. But I think that's a, a valid point and I'm glad it was brought up. And that's the beauty of the the Facebook group. Not that I come up with every idea, but sometimes I'll be thinking about something and I won't bother saying it and somebody will, will, will bring it up. And I was like, wow, I really do need to flesh this out further. So I do want to talk a little bit about what it means to be in a liquidation market. And again, I talked about this this morning. I've been talking about this a lot lately. And a liquidation market is a really, really, really scary thing. That's where everything gets tossed out because people are looking to raise money and raise money really fast. The old adage, the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater. Well, in this case, and I think I've got a slide in somewhere, but the baby, the bathwater, and the tub all got thrown out the window in this slide, at least so far. So here's real estate versus IYR which is the pirates, one of the pirates' favorite stocks. I just dress as a pirate, in fact. So you can see which way is real estate headed. Looks like it's headed down. Eyeballing it, that's a 40% drop. Gold to commodity and gold to gold stocks, okay? These are V, GLD, and XAU. XAU is the line chart. And the chart underneath is GLD. It's a little hard to see on the right, but the line chart has dropped about half in value, I think. No, we don't have the right scale on here, so that's hard to say exactly how far it's dropped, but it's dropped significant as you, significant leads for me to say. As you can see, as have the gold stocks. Stock, the stocks themselves, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon surgeon to be able to draw a big blue arrow. So that's pointing down. Uh, I think we're approaching 30% drop in stocks. I think it was 29 and change based on my close to close. Now bonds held in there for a while. There was a little flight to safety initially in bonds. That didn't have me feeling good about this market, but it was at least a glimmer of hope that the baby was not going to be thrown out with the bath water but then what happened bonds imploded a mortgage broker called me a few days ago and i just told her it was crazy and uh you know what i'm seeing is is somewhat unprecedented you know never unprecedented never never say never in markets okay and a market can do whatever and it's it's actually kind of fascinating the the velocity of this move is just absolutely amazing. So all asset classes are being sold. My uncle said this is a great on sale opportunity. Well, tell your uncle that it always is darkest right before it gets more dark. And I would go back two or three days whenever I wrote the column under my bear market updates where I showed the NASDAQ down 50% in 2000, sure seemed like a bargain, and it went down another 50% from there. I saw somebody once saying, no, oh, you should sell puts when the market's down 50%. Well, that'll work until it don't. If it goes down another 50%, then you might regret, live to regret that. Now, I'm not gonna say I called the top, but I do wanna point out something. 
for the next top or the next bottom is that there were signs, signs everywhere. There are signs. In this case, they were a little slow to react. And as you'll see in one second, what was kind of fascinating is a longer term signal triggered before the shorter term signal, which I don't want to digress too far. I've been reading the headlines from a professional forum that I'm part of. And I haven't had enough time because they're putting out so much content. There's no way in the world I'd ever be able to keep up. But I've been reading some of the comments and headlines, and it's it's like this market actually broke, sort of broke some of these systems. And it's and I think what they're what they're trying to say is there's some anomalies out there. And one of the big anomalies that I found was the longer term system triggered before the shorter term system or before some of the shorter term systems, I should say, because the longer term system had a bit of a characteristic that was based on price and not so much on an indicator catching up, although it did have to trade below the 50 day moving average, but that's still price based. Now, every bear market will have sell signals. And I think Greg Moore said this, and I fully agree, is, is that they treat all sell signals as if they will become the big one. And as I added, Elizabeth implied, and he may have said that too, to give him credit. Now, the thing is, not every signal will turn into a bear market, and that's where the whipsaws are frustrating quote comes in. And I've been quoting Greg a lot on this. Whipsaws are frustrating. Bear markets are devastating. You could survive frustration. Now, keep in mind that the hourly chart is going to turn long before the other chart. So here's your hourly bow tie. And the actual signal on this was, let me just see if we could get it in here. So the hourly signal, you had the bow ties turn here, okay? Meaning that they crossed over and spread out. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through the systems because I beat the dead horse on this. You can look at the books and you could also go into the members area and study bow ties. But technically you need the moving averages to come together and spread out. And then you need a, ideally a higher high to higher low. So the trigger would have been back here, okay? Looks like it was on February 21st, you had a sell signal. Now, and I think I have a slide on this further down, keep in mind that the shorter the signal you're looking at, the more likely you are going to get whipsawed. We have a member of the group, Jim Freeman, and he keeps us up to date on hourly bow ties and things like that, and he gets out on these hourly signals. Now, I'm sure Jim gets whipsawed a little bit, but his wife, he said, was asking him last time he exited back in February, how come we're 80% in cash? Like, why aren't we in stocks? And then, uh, I guess about a week or so ago, she says, never mind. <laughs> so I would urge you to be really careful trading just off of hourly charts but it's okay to use it as possibly a shot across the bow, maybe a warning sign. And I will be watching carefully. And believe me, we're nowhere near close to having this happen, but we'll be watching carefully for a bow tie to the upside on the hourly charts. And I might be tempted to take a swing trade on that. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Certainly maybe an intraday trade. Now, this is what I was getting to. You're going to look like a genius when you exit on the hourly chart right before the mother of all bear markets, kind of like our buddy Jim, but you're also going to get whipsawed a lot. I'm not sure where else I was going with that, but you will get some whipsaw, and whipsaw is okay. Here's the chart with the actual cell in it. There it is right there, 3340 round numbers at one o'clock on February 31st, February 31st, which does not exist, obviously, February 21st. Now, here's the S&P 500. Here's your sell signal on the daily chart. And it was up into 3000s too. And it was right around March 6th or so. 
And by the way, all of these things I pointed out as they were beginning to occur. I didn't say at the top, we're at a top, because I didn't know we were at a top, okay? I'm a trend follower. If the market is making new highs, then it's fine, okay? Until it doesn't. And then we had a sell signal on the TFM 10% system because the market dropped more than 10% on a closing basis from its 50-week closing high, and it closed below the 50-week moving average. And what's fascinating here, as I alluded to earlier, is that this is a longer-term system. You would take, you would think it would take weeks for this to catch up to daily signals, but this thing, like some of, some of my fellow AAPTA a members are saying, it's like broke the model. It's like, wow, something's happening. It's kind of like getting hit in the head with a halibut. When you see a longer-term signal trigger so damn fast, that was a bit of a scary thing for me to see. And then it took a little while for the daily bow ties to catch up, as I just said. Now, this slide comes from, I've been asked to put together a, a little quick presentation for stockcharts.com. And I'm going to use, I'm going to talk about simplified market timing like we're talking about now. But the point I want to make is on a weekly basis, if you just followed the bow ties or even something as simple as, longer term landry light you'd probably do okay so here are some signals going back to the past two bear markets and then the bull markets that followed them now because we're waiting for those moving averages to cross over there was quite a bit of lag the last time the market turned up back in 2009. what's kind of cool is the prior time when the market took two years to bottom out the bow tie signal got you in pretty early on that one so I would look at these daily and weekly signals. And even especially now, the market's become so volatile. Keep an eye on those hourly signals too. Now, one thing that, that's kind of fascinating is the diaper change, meaning the amount of money you lose after or would have lost if you're buying hold, as opposed to getting out of the way. As that number grows, the TFM 10% system is going to look a lot better. If you want the rules for the system, you can get them from the free market timing course, which is a banner ad on the website. You can get them there. If you're already a member of the of daylander.com, you already have all this behind the members area. When I designed this system, I wanted to I set out to prove that a very simple system could get you out of the market before something really, really bad happened. My thinking is every so often, and a lot more often than it should statistically, the market loses half of its value. Well, buy and hold works until it don't, okay? And we've had some really nice recoveries over the last two bear markets, but sometimes it takes a while. The other thing too is, as one of my friends pointed out, who's around my age, he's like, I'm into the long term, but my long term is becoming short term, meaning that he's down to several years before he'd like to retire. And he was pretty excited not that long ago because he was making 1K a day and his 401K and he was feeling pretty good about it and wondering why he was bothering with this troublesome day job when all he had to do was sit on his butt and make $1,000 a day in his retirement account. Note to self, next time a friend tells me he's making 1K a day in his 401K, start watching for an hourly sell signal. <laughs> but anyway, the point or the designer's intent of this originally, as I've been beating a death horse, was to figure out if we could avoid those diaper change moments. Diaper change comes from Ian McActivy. If he was still with us today, I would love to see his presentations on what's happening now that the SHTF, he did a lot of presentations where he talked about the possibility of a diaper change moment and what happens during those times. But you can see going back to the bear market of 2000, keep in mind this diaper change is the amount of loss you would have after 
the exit. So we exited, or I should say the system exited at 3046 or on 227, okay? For a little tiny gain of 9%. Well, that's that how long are we in the market? 300 You're in the market pretty much all year for a full year and you only made 9%. Well, that's a hell of a lot better than losing 25% plus another 10% because this system will lose 10% before it stops out at least, okay? So when I published this again a couple of years ago, it really didn't beat buy and hold that well, but seeing this unfold in real time shows me that just by simply avoiding these diaper change moments, the performance gets much, 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 much better. Now, we're not making any more money now, okay? So this is 112,612. I don't know if you can see it, but this is the starting value here of 10,000. So that's what the money grew from 1988 on. And I have gone back all the way to the 1900s, and it's pretty impressive. I think I've talked about this in weeks prior. Knock on wood, but so far, a 10% drop was enough to get you out, plus the little caveat of being below the moving average. Would have got you out in 1929, would have got you out before the crash in 87. And there's no guarantee of this, right? Okay, but so far, so good over the past 120 years or so, or 100 years at least. Anyway, it's the big loss that kills you. And if you save and save and save and save and save, and you're like, I got enough to retire, I got to retire. And then over the next several weeks, the market loses half its value, then your retirement is going to look a lot different. You're running out of long-term. The long-term has become the short-term. So I can't say enough about the perils of buy and hold. Greg Morris once said that some of the metrics they use are based on an 81-year time horizon, as I've said before, quoting the eloquent Sweet Brown, Ain't nobody got time for that. And his point is that you're in your 20s, you're just getting out of college or whatever you decided to do. You start your career, you fall in love, you have a baby, now you got a family, now you got a mortgage. And before you know it, you're in your 30s or higher before or later, and before you even start thinking about retirement, putting a little money away. So your investment horizon, I can assure you, is not 81 years. Now, last week we talked about letting the ebb and flow control your portfolio with a focus on the model account. I'll get back to my own stuff in coming weeks. But the model portfolio right at the peak was up 19,155. And that is on a 100K account. And then taking a snapshot yesterday, it's up 14,244 based on a hypothetical 100K account. Now, out of that, what was shown in a portfolio was in the prior portfolio, the stocks that have stopped out, most at gains, but a couple at losses, stopped out for a profit of 7551, 7,551. So if we take the loss from the two portfolios, we had a loss of 49.11, but then the profits that were locked in and losses netted out to a gain of 7,551. You do the math on that. <laughs> Somebody said that all these kids that are getting homeschooled now are gonna learn how to carry the one as opposed to the common math or whatever. I thought that was kind of funny. Anyway, a gain, actually a gain of 2,640, and that's, the whole thing going into this is like, okay, let's let's see what comes out the other side. And I was really excited to see how it was going to unfold. And it's been a little scary. It hasn't been as easy as I'm showing you here. But the point is, it can be done by letting your stops take you out of your longs as they begin to go sour. And by taking setups on the short side, because that's the only thing that's available. And of course, taking those initial profits as offered on the short side and trailing that stop lower for when, not if, the big retrace rally comes along. So if we look at the S&P 500, it's lost 29% on a closing basis. And knock on wood, and this might change a little bit today, we get a little retrace, or a little more retrace. 
but based on a snapshot taken yesterday when this S&P chart was snapped, the model portfolio is up 2.464% since this mess began. Now, it was down a little bit a couple of days ago, but with the recent slide, it's improved quite a bit. And all of the stocks in the portfolio have now hit the initial profit target. It was actually negative a little bit. And as I said a few weeks ago, you can't eat relative performance. If the S&P is down 60% and your broker or whatever, your manager is only down 50%, you still lost half of your money. But a slight negative is better than a big negative and a positive is even better. This doesn't always work, but I can tell you this, this was a really impressive, what do you call it, a shock test, stress test, shock test, whatever you wanna call it, for the trend following, more unimplied, swing to intermediate term trading that we do with the core methodology. Because if you have, as I talked about last week, if you have a gradual rollover like in 2007, you'll slowly get taken out of your longs, but you won't be able to find any new longs because the momentum has slowed. And then if you're looking at a couple thousand charts a day, like I am, you'll start picking up some shorts and you'll start noticing that you're starting to see more and more shorts. And as I said, ad nauseum, not to be Mr. Guru who picked the top. I did not pick the top in 2007, but I did remember, or I do remember apologizing to my clients for recommending shorts, even though the market was at new highs. That was a much easier rollover to play. And it was amazing after the fact, how many people were freaking out. I'm going like, this thing just kind of slowly died. And we had like weekly signals triggering late, 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 maybe not late 2007, but certainly early, early, early 2008. We had daily signals that tr triggered long before that, okay? So the signs will be there and the signals will be there. This one was, was brutal because it happened so fast. Now, one thing I woke up thinking about this morning, you look at this chart, this is a 50-day closing high okay and if the market goes on to make new highs obviously that line rises and below that is a 10 percent line so whenever the market makes new highs that market that falls behind by 10 percent and this is the s p 500. one thing i woke up thinking about this morning is because this market has dropped so fast it's going to take a long time for that line to begin dropping to get a buy signal. So I just thought that's pretty cool. The buy, it buys when you're within 10% of a 50-week high. And, and I guess by definition, it would take 50 weeks to get there, right? But anyway, for some reason, I woke up thinking about that. So this is going to be really slow to turn. This one particular system, the TFM 10%, it's going to be really slow to turn when the market turns. So you might want to keep an eye out first on the hourly bow tie and then on the daily bow tie. And then even on the daily, you might want to look at first thrusts and things like that, especially if you're looking to catch some swing trades off of the low. So this system will have a lot of lag to it. Now, if we go down and meander for a while at these low levels, then it's going to start catching up fairly quickly. So these are left over from last week. But the reason I'm showing the model is to prove that things could work from a trend follower's perspective in both good times and in bad. We talked about it last week. We had a, a nick on TSCO before it imploded, so a little discretion does help. And the ebb and flow is key. And you, you can't label yourself bullish or bearish because that'll get you in trouble. But if you pay attention to the database, you'll know which side of the market you need to be on and it, it will alert you and give you pieces to the puzzle. But don't try to be a guru and pick a top and pick a bottom and label yourself bullish or bearish. I mean, obviously I think we're all a little bearish now, so that's pretty much impossible. The thing that I talked about last week too is I was really aggressive, a lot of IPOs, 
a lot of thinner issues, meaning uh, bad spreads and hard to get in, uh, hard to get out of, easy to get in, hard to get out of. Hotel California is one of you guys pointed out type of stocks. And that really paid off well until it didn't, okay? But I'm not dead yet. My shorts have been saving me a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and open it up for questions in general, questions on individual stocks. You know, this could be a real lonely business, and this has been a godsend for me, is being able to interact with other traders in the Facebook group. So if you are a member of DaveLander.com, a gold member that is, please join the Facebook group, and the link is under the members area, and I'll prove it right away. You can interact with other traders, ask for help. One thing that's been kind of cool so far is I've gotten a few phone calls from some of you saying, hey, this guy is kind of out there being wild and crazy. You know, hate to see him blow up. Maybe we could help him a little bit. And I thought that was very nice and generous. And then we're able to go to the Q&A forum or Q&A presentations to answer any questions that aren't uh, easily answered. Also see the signs and signals. We got uh, Vice President of Market Timing now there. He's gonna show us the hourly signals as they occur, I hope. And I'll hop in and show uh, signals too. You can follow along with the opening gap reversal and I have a little $4 million challenge going on. We'll see if I can turn a $14,000 account into 4 million and do it live, as opposed to saying, hey, I made all this money in hindsight, right? And did you really make it? Probably not, <laughs> before I digress too far. Anyway, you know, hey, next time I, I come up with a $4 million challenge while the market is going up, that's another sign. That's like the 1K a day in the 401K. That's a kiss of death too. But anyway, it first trade I think went up 50% and then um, we haven't done so well so far, we being me. All right, let's start off with the P's. And then obviously, as you can plainly see, we had the bow tie down. We've been in a pretty serious slide. So far, the market hasn't been able to really lift its head from oversold. It will. I don't know when. I'm not going to call the bottom. There's enough people out there doing that, okay? As I said earlier, maybe we get a hourly signal, and that might be a good time to brace for a bounce. If you back the chart way out, unfortunately, this sucks to put it mildly even though i'm really short i don't i'll play you know if you can't be in a trend you love love the trend you're in so you can pretty much go back to 2017 i've seen a few posts out there about the dow which, which we can look at saying that it has now given up the trump rally and as you can see it has or it's close to doing that let's see public he went in right here you know, so now we're in Flatsville. That's one of the problems. It's one thing that I really didn't like was you got to be really careful when you take credit for the stock market rally. Because when the SHTF, you have to take credit for that too, unfortunately. But the P's, I mean, come on, guys, draw your big blue arrows. This is just ugly. Will it bounce? Yes. When? I don't know. Am I interviewing myself? Yes. All right, NASDAQ, look at that. You know, it's so funny. You look at the charts, it's like, oh, look, it's it's up a little bit today. When you look at the numbers, that's 200-point rally. Good Lord, right? That's crazy. But let's not start kissing each other just yet. Obviously, lots of sell signals there, or weeks ago, we should say. And it's looking pretty ugly. We're down almost to where we were during that December spill. And if you guys go back and look at presentations I did back here, I was a little concerned. We had a daily bow tie down back here. We had signals in the S&P. We had a TFM 10% signal back in late fall of 2019. And the market did sell off fairly hard. It looks like a whipsaw on the longer term chart. And the Russell 2000, as I often say, really got creamed back then, lost about 18% from that signal. So it was nothing to sneeze at. And believe me, if you're in individual stocks, especially these momentum type of stocks that we like to trade, then you had to get out of the way in 2019, but that's okay. Russell 2000, ugliest of them all, has imploded as of late, as you know, it never did make it back to all time highs. And that has been something I have complained about quite often. Now, before we get to the sector action, we have a comment in here. Not trying to pick a bottom, but we could be at or near a bottom. Certain person, your brother from another mother, 
says the best sign to market bottoms is panic selling. I, I agree with that, but I hate to say this time is different, okay? But these are circumstances that we've never experienced. And I think we have to really take this thing seriously. And I think being a trend following moron, I'm not going to rush in and try to catch that low. Now, Dave, I thought you said you were guilty. Yeah, I've been guilty of some bad trading, some day trades, try to play these bounces. And most of those have failed miserably. It's been like beating my head against the wall. I feel so good when I stop. But if we do get, by the way, if we do get the mother of all gaps lower, followed by a vacuum back up, it might be worth playing for a day trade. Okay. So my brother from another mother says panic selling is by capitulation in large range expansion. I agree with all those things. But if you're calling a point in time and you're saying this is the, and I watched the presentation, I know exactly what you're talking about, the T-H-E all in caps low, it's a very dangerous place to be. Here's how I think it's going to play out. And I actually wrote about this a few days ago in my column on Bandcamp. So what I think is gonna happen is we're gonna bounce from lows, okay? So let's call lows A, okay? The question is, is this, a and the answer is i don't know okay so after we get to a and you'll know it when you see it like justice Pyer stewart when this market begins to go straight up okay i would not call that a bottom okay that is just uh intermediate low this is your retrace rally and i hope I don't know, hoping one hand and the other. I don't see it was still first. I know. But I hope it goes straight back to brand new highs. I get knocked out of all my shorts. I go back to the business of being long. Fine with me. But at some point, we're going to end up at the top of the pullback. Let's just call that B. And then I think it's going to be another leg down to C at the least, a retest. So I'm not sure how you can call a bottom when they. In a market when you have quite a few bottoms like for instance right here kind of a textbook example you've got a big slide okay it looks like we're done yeah look at that the market goes straight up and then what happens that it implodes again okay now i'm not suggesting wave counting or anything like that that'll get you in a lot of trouble but i am suggesting that we are in a downtrend until proven otherwise. And then in that downtrend, there'll be some pullbacks along the way. Okay, one way that he identifies panic sellings by capitulation seen by large range expansion. Yeah, it gets it gets really volatile and the market gets whipsawed around and finally everybody gets worn out, throws in a towel or whatever, then it, bow, then it bottoms. I'm not gonna argue with that. We've seen that in recent days. I'm looking for the bear to catch the Wuhan coronavirus. Okay, yeah, I hear you on that. Um, yeah, and those were really good points. And I hear him, and you know, he's been around a lot longer than I have. And that's something that I almost wrote this morning is people who are a lot smarter than me are starting to call bottoms. But I think that's a dangerous game. And of course, the, the idiot guru is gonna call bottoms all the time. Okay. So that's the P's. Gold, the stock, I'm sorry, gold, the commodity headed lower. And then every area you can imagine, even the metals and mining, okay. Even gold stocks, silver stocks, conglomerates, durables, non durables. You know, you would think that non durables, what's non durables? Toilet paper, right? You think that'd be going up, but not yet. Food, you think food would be going up because everybody needs some food, right? Nope. Tobacco, well, you know, I don't smoke, but I might start. <laughs> Banks, insurance, real estate, as we just talked about. Drugs, you think drugs be going higher? but they're not. Biotech, you think biotech be going higher. And that kind of reminds me, there are a few biotechs that have blasted higher, but I would be careful, like I said earlier, in getting caught up in any theme investing. Like, okay, we're gonna invest in this biotech stock because they have the best chance of curing the coronavirus, okay? I would urge you to not try to interject some sort of logic into your trading, but rather 
if you see a setup you really like in biotech, then knock yourself out. Health services, seems like that should be doing pretty good too, right? You know, that's the problem with theme-based investing, right? Defense, manufacturing, so the list goes on and on. We're just going through the major sectors here. What's kind of fascinating and something I like to do on the big down days is, transport's obviously getting inflowed. What I like to do on the big down days is go in and look at all 239 of these Morningstar industry groups. And I'll probably eventually be doing more and more work with stockcharts.com because they've been very accommodating over there and helping me out with a lot of my stuff. So I don't know what groups they have over there, but right now I'm using the Morningstar industry groups and I do a one day change by percentage with those groups. And what's fascinating is there's been some days where all 239 have been down. You would think there'd be some flight to safety in one of those 239 areas, but no, it's all of them have been headed lower. So that's a pretty scary thing. And as you go through all these areas, there's quite a few, or I should say all of them are in pretty serious down, downtrends. And then of course, bonds, which blasted higher, came down. How are beer and liquor stocks doing? Yeah, you know, I tell you what, I've kind of broke my rule of no drinking due the week because we stocked up, we got about two weeks worth of alcohol. And, <laughs> you know, I talk about commitment devices and the commitment device for me is if I don't want to drink during the week, I just don't buy beer and I'm fine. I just, I get hungry and I'll eat, okay? But it um, been hard not to uh, have a beer after a long day in here, 12 hours in here and, uh, you know, checking in here and there and then you know I'm watching way more news than I should and watching um taking a look at that little uh website that just shows the virus grow and I think that's what scared the crap out of me is that you know first of all if you understand how exponential things work and the example I gave in a recent column was Ed Zakota he wrote a book about us being in the 39th day Gavopoli and uh he came to speak to us, is very kind to come speak to us. And his point was that if it takes duckweed 39 days to cover half of a pond, how much longer would it take to cover the other half of the pond? And your first answer would be 39. It actually only takes one day, okay? Because duckweed grows at an exponential rate. And if you got a half a pond full of it and it doubles overnight, which is, that's all it takes. So I was a little nervous that we might be in the 39th day with this from looking at that silly website where you got, you know, Wuhan and China area, and then all of a sudden you got all of China, and then all of a sudden you got one little dot in the United States, and then now the United States has turned red, okay? And let me see if I could pull that up in background or S and G's. Anyway, it just kind of illustrates the uh, the scariness of exponential growth and how we need to take this thing really, 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 really seriously. And I have have curtailed my cruising around quite a bit. So I don't know if you could copy this big old URL but let me just share this real quick. This is the site that you're seeing on TV, okay? And I'm not sure that this is gonna really help your trading or has anything to do with it, but you can see the United States is now, you know, Asia looked really, really bad. It looks like it's improved a little bit, but you see how you know, the growth is getting bigger and bigger in the United States, getting more and more of these little red dots in here. Pretty scary numbers, but we will survive. All right, let me get back to the charts. So somebody said, what about liquor stocks? Yeah, you would think they'd be doing well. And if you can give me a couple, I'll be happy to pull them up. But the only one that comes to mind is a liquor stock is uh, Bud. And so far, of course, you know, <laughs> I guess that's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. I'm not a big fan of Bud. But so far, the big blue arrow points down there too. So again, 
what was my point earlier? Beware of theme-based investing, okay? Everybody's stuck at home, they're bored, they're drinking. <laughs> I've been drinking a little, I think most of us have. So you would think that the liquor stocks will go up. You have some other ones uh, you pull up. I think it's, what's it, Reserve or, is there a beer and liquor in the foods? I forget, let's, let's go look at that real quick. And then feel free to ask about any other stocks you want. Uh, Chris, you're next. Let's see, where are the morning store industry groups? Under foods, do, 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 do. talk amongst yourselves, food. I don't think there's a liquor down here, is there? Well, no, there's beverages, wineries and distilleries, okay? Well, you know, there you go right there. Okay, STZ is a liquor stock, STZ. Okay, what's STZ doing? Con that's the one I was trying to think of, Constellation Brands. Um, so they're down from the peak, they're down 42%, okay? So be really, really careful. Peloton, that's another one of those plays, okay? Um, I need to dust mine off and get back on it. Something I thought about doing because I really been limiting myself to not leaving the house that much. You know, there's no need to have me out there adding to the confusion. I'm stuck in front of these screens anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, long or short, I would say short on that one. Okay. You know, thing is, is the setups aren't fantastic lately. You know, we're waiting for the market to uh, to pull back. My new favorite drink, Quarantini. You know, along those lines, that's pretty funny. Along those lines, uh, my wife read somewhere that the women who give birth nine months from now, their babies are going to be known as perennials. I thought that was kind of funny. So, yeah, Donald, not so hot from what we've seen. Okay, Coop is a possible short. Yeah, now, see, this looks interesting at first glance at least. Now the HV is not too, too crazy. And the reason Chris is saying HV a little high, I do prefer, and I can't do it on the fly, but if you go in and look at tractor supply and PAGs and some of these other stocks that we shorted fairly recently, you'll notice that those were kind of like bigger cap stocks at high levels rolling over and the HV was a little bit lower. So that's why I'm saying that. But no, that's not too bad. I would almost, uh, I think the stocks at higher levels are going to be better shorts than the stocks that are already beating up, beaten up. And then sometimes it's a little perverse or weird, whatever you want to call it, uh, bizarre maybe would be a better word, not so strange word. But um, sometimes these stocks at fairly high levels, the ones that hold up fairly well, become a source of funds for bottom fishing for the big institutions. So the big institutions. They're still holding on to some of these that are high levels. And then when they decide to bottom fish, they dump the stocks at high levels. So it's kind of like you would think the momentum stocks that are the few that are remaining would be the place to be, but that's not always the case. But yeah, I think this one looks pretty good. I, I think it'd be a dangerous short, and maybe that's what you're alluding to, but it does fit the pattern of, okay, we sold off at all time highs. We got the mother of all retrace rallies. This is not a buy at this point but more of a short. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say yes on that. And I probably should just give you a high five because that's probably the best you're gonna find as far as a short side is concerned. I haven't recommended anything in a while because I'm waiting for A, good looking setups and B for the market to rally a little bit. Once I get the setups, I'll take the setups, but ideally I wanna see the market rally too. Okay, kind of on a rant today. Any other questions, any other stocks you want me to look at? Again, now's the time to be, you know, as I've been saying lately, better to be sitting on the dock, wishing you were out to sea than out to sea, wishing you were in the dock. I've almost died a few times offshore. <laughs> that sounds like an exaggeration, but we were sinking pretty bad, and luckily we figured out the problem, and it was not a delaminating hull. The, there was a class action lawsuit against this one particular boat manufacturer. I knew personally... My really good friend, a boat I've raced on for years, delaminated, and luckily it happened right next to the Coast Guard at the finish line. They were able to pump the boat out. I was not on that trip. But it was my very good friend's boat, delaminated, 
another boat in the in the lake around here nearby here both from New Orleans are laminated and sank and then there were a few nationwide so I thought we were delaminating about 600 miles off of Bermuda. OZK, a possible short for Stuart. OZK, I'm saying it like that because of, have you seen the uh, Californians? Stuart, <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah, you know, it's at low levels. You know, that's my only deal. Uh, but yeah, it looks good. It can be wide and loose at times, okay? I would much rather prefer if this was all time highs right here and just coming off of that, but I hear you. Um, it's not horrible. It's a little, it's a little volatile for a bank with an HV of 58, but you know, everything has got a high HV right now. Lately, when I've been doing my scans, usually I'm I'm hitting a little space bar like the rat going for the cocaine, you know, and bam, 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 going through, you know, tons of stocks like this, you know. And usually before I know it, I'm down in the 30s and 40s in the HV and I'm nearly done. Lately, it seems like I'm banging away for 20 minutes or so and I'm still at like 88 or 89 or 90 HV. It's just taking forever to get further down into the database when I sort everything out by HV. So, um, you know, I think I would go ahead and pass on that. Maybe find something at a little bit higher levels, work to find something. Now, keep in mind that if we stay down here for a while, meaning that the S&P stays at these levels or lower, then at some point we're going to have to just go into longer term uh, trend following mode like we normally do as opposed to trying to find these transitions at the high levels. In other words, we'll be faced with only trend resumption patterns because everything else has crashed. HB, HB, you have the right signal? So, uh, sig uh, I don't, you, I don't have that chart. HB, I didn't think I recognize a symbol. You got anything else? Can you see what the, can you correct your symbol real quick? And I'll go ahead and, uh, when you say HB, HV, what do you refer to? Oh, HV, H is in uh, Harry, V is in victory, okay? Um, I have it right here in a chart. If you are a member as you are, then go to members resources, and I think I have the formula there, okay? Yes, because it's in the scans. You can take it out of the scans and then put a custom field on your screen, okay? Yeah, you know, I'm trying to take care of everybody as best I can, and that's why I've created these uh, members resources, and I'll show you how to get there as I start wrapping things up. If you go to my website and go to members, and I may not be logged in, which looks like this, and then click on members resources. And as you guys need things, I'll start putting them here. So here's your telechart scans and instructions. Eventually there'll be links to some of the stock charts, things, and then um, just anything else you guys are asking for. So it's under members resources, daylander.com slash members slash members dash resources. So check that out. I'm trying to do anything to A, help you, and B, from a selfish perspective, cut down on my cubital tunnel, pro cubital, cubital tunnel problems and carpal tunnel problems and avoid three more surgeries, which the doctor's like, oh yeah, we just did three more releases. I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't think so. All right, any more questions? Going once, going twice. I want to thank everybody for coming today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, bring it up and Facebook and we'll discuss it further. Everybody have a great weekend. If we don't talk to you now and then, stay safe. Enjoy being home. We'll all get through this. It just takes, takes a little time. Thanks, everyone. And again, have a great weekend. Thank you so much.